Hey everyone, Charles Judd here, and in this video we're going to take a look at the 1.3F topic of EIGRP optimization, convergence, and scalability. We're starting to combine many of the topics that we've previously looked at in this EIGRP section, but some of the things I want to explore here are how we can ensure fast convergence for path failures. I want to look at reducing our query message propagation boundaries by using stub routing and summarization and using FRR, the fast reroute mechanism in EIGRP. Slightly more complex topology here that we're working with. We have nine routers, all participating in named EIGRP. On router one, if we say show IP route, we'll see that we have awareness of every network segment here on this router. If we say show IP EIGRP topology, we see that all of our EIGRP information is also available. We see that we have redundant paths to the 89.89.89.0 slash 24 network, and we see the same thing for the 10.5.0.0 slash 24 network. So first, let's look at some ways that we can ensure fast convergence with EIGRP. The main ways we do this is through summarization and through stub routers. Both of these help reduce the query boundaries of our EIGRP network so that we don't have to wait as long for query replies before we're able to converge. If we go all the way over to R9 on the other side of our network, and let's say show IP route, you'll notice that we have separate routes for the 10.1.0.0, 10.2.0.0, 10.3, 10.4, 10.5, all of these are separate routes learned by EIGRP, and they're all available over the 79.79.79.1 interface, or gig 0 slash 0, in other words, locally on this router. That connects out to R7. We see all of these routes in our routing table because route summarization is not enabled for EIGRP. Now, depending on your version of iOS, auto summary might be enabled or disabled by default with EIGRP. So to show how route summarization can limit the scope of our query messages, let's go to R1 and let's turn on debugging only for our query and reply messages. Let's say debug EIGRP packets, if we look at contextual help, we have different options there. We can say reply and query, and you'll see that packet debugging is on only for those two EIGRP packet types. I'm gonna copy this command. I'm just gonna paste this into all of our routers. I'm gonna turn that on on our entire network so we can see what's going on. R5, R6, R7, R8, and R9. So now we have the ability to see what's happening anywhere we go on this network. So let's go over to R4. Let's say that the link between R4 and R5 goes down. Let's say they lose connectivity to the 10.5.0.0 slash 24 network. We know that R4 will send a query to R2 while R5 sends a query to R3. R2 and R3 will in turn send their own queries and these will continue to propagate throughout the network until we're able to find an alternate path. If no one knows an alternate path, these queries will reach the other edge of our network and the replies will be sent back to the appropriate neighbor indicating that we don't have an alternate path. So let's mimic this situation and look at that in our debug output. So here on R4, let's go under interface gig zero slash one and let's say shut. Let's jump over to R5 and do the same thing. So now we have both of those interfaces shut down and we're already seeing some messages in our debug output. If we go over to R2 and we scroll up to the beginning of this output, you'll see that we received a query message on gig zero slash one, which is of course coming from R4. We see a query sent out on gig zero slash zero towards R1. So we're seeing these queries propagating throughout the network. If we go all the way over to the far side of our network. If we go to R9, for example, you'll see that we also have the same thing happening here. We've received queries all the way on the other edge of our network. So losing this network has triggered queries throughout our entire topology, which is undesirable. This network is rather small, but in a large network, this is going to slow down our convergence time. Let's look at the first way we can limit this query scope, which is through summarization. If I go back to R4, I'm just gonna bring that interface back up. Same thing on R5. 
we'll see our adjacency reform here. If I say do show IP route, we should see that back in our routing table. And yes, we do see that network back in our routing table, so that looks good. So looking at our topology, we can see that we can easily summarize the networks connected to R1 that are going out to R2 and R3. And that would help limit our query scope. So let's do that and let's take a look. Let's go over to R1. And one way we can do summarization in EIGRP is using the auto summarization feature. To do that, let's go under router EIGRP. My named instance is called lab. We want to say address hyphen family IP version four autonomous system one. And we want to go under topology based configuration mode. And here we can simply say auto hyphen summary to enable that. We're going to see all of our adjacencies resync. That's completely expected. I'm going to just clear off the console on most of these routers so that we can see things more clearly because we do have a lot of debug messages coming into those. R7, R8, and R9. Okay, all that's good. Now here on R9, let's say show IP route, and we're gonna see something a bit different. Instead of having all of those individual 10.0.0.0 networks, we see a single summary route being advertised now. 10.0.0.0 slash eight. So let's see what happens now if we again shut down the interfaces on R4 and R5. I'm gonna clear off a little bit of room here so we can see any potential debugging messages come in. So we're still under our interface configuration mode. Just gonna say shut on R4 and shut on R5. So if we go to R3, we are seeing our queries reach R3. They're propagating all the way over to R1, of course. And if we travel across to the other side of our network, we're gonna see on R6, we've received a query. We've sent a reply, the same thing on R7, but notice on R8, we don't have anything in our debug output. If we look at R9, we're gonna see the same story. We are not receiving query messages on routers eight and nine. This is because of our network summarization. Network summarization will stop queries that are more than one hop away from the device where the summarization is enabled for any network that matches the summarized range. So in our case, our queries can reach R6 and R7, but they can't go any further to reach R8 and R9. If we go back to R1, and we'll just say no auto hyphen summary, and I wanna show you how to perform manual summarization. We do that on a per interface basis under address family configuration mode. So we'll let this finish. Looks like everything is resynced now. So let's go back a level under address family configuration mode, and we can say AF hyphen interface, and let's start with gig zero slash two, and we can say summary hyphen address, followed by the summary address that we want to use. We can use 10.0.0.0 slash eight as our summary address. So we'll put that in. You can see again, we resync. Let's go under address family interface gig zero slash three now and we'll arrow up and run the exact same summary address command. We get our resync messages. Let's go over to R6 and we'll clear off a little bit of space. And we'll say show IP route. Notice that we are going to see our summary address, of course, the 10.0.0.0 slash eight. If we go to R2, remember we didn't configure the summary address on any interfaces facing in this direction. If we say show IP route, we're still gonna see all of our individual networks listed there as we do in our routing table here. Let's go back to R1 now and let's take a look at something else we can do with a summary route, which is a leak map. A leak map will allow you to advertise a specific prefix within a range of your summary advertisement, as well as the summary route itself. So this is helpful in cases where you would still want the advantages of summary routing, but maybe you still want to allow a specific route to be seen so that it's preferred over others for traffic engineering. So here on R1, let's first create an access control list to identify the network we want to allow through. So I'll say IP access hyphen list standard. I'll call this allow. I'm going to allow the 10.5.0.0 network. So I'll say permit 10.5.0.0. 
put in our mask value, and that's it for the ACL. Now let's create a route map pointing to the ACL. So we'll say routes hyphen map. I'll call this leak permit 10. I want to match on the IP address identified by the ACL named allow. Now we can alter our summary address that's configured on our address family interface to allow this through. So if we go to R9 on the other side of our network and I say show IP route, we'll see that we only know about our summary address for all of our 10.0.0.0 slash eight networks. Let's go back to R1 and let's go under router EIGRP lab. We'll say address hyphen family IP version four autonomous system one topology base. Actually, I don't need to go under topology base. I need to go under my address family interface and I'm going to say gig zero slash two. And now I can re enter my summary address command. So let's say summary hyphen address 10.0.0.0 slash eight. If you look at contextual help, we can add on the leak hyphen map keyword and we'll follow that with the name of our route map that we created, which is of course leak. You'll see that we had a neighbor change happen. Let's go under interface gig zero slash three as well. And we'll run the same command. We'll alter our summary address command. If we go back over to R nine and again, say show IP route. Notice this time that we're going to still see our summary address. We see that here 10.0.0.0 slash eight, but we also see the network that we allowed through with our leak map, the 10.5.0.0 slash 24 network. So we see our summary address along with the more specific route that we allowed to leak through. Another option for limiting the scope of our query messages is to configure an EIGRP stub. So let's say that we want to configure R6 and R7 as stub routers, only advertising connected networks. Let's go to R6. Let's go under router EIGRP lab address family IP version four autonomous system one. We want to say EIGRP stub. And if we look at contextual help, you'll see the familiar EIGRP options here. Now, if we just hit enter, with no keyword by default, that's going to advertise both connected and summary routes. In my case, I'm going to configure that for connected. So let's go to R7. Let's do the exact same thing. We do see some debug messages here where we still have that turned on. Router EIGRP lab address family IP version four autonomous system one EIGRP stub connected. So now that's in place. We see our adjacencies resetting because our peering info has changed. And once that completes here on R7, let's say show IP route. And this router still has awareness of all of the network segments that it did before. We see, of course, our summary address. We see the address allowed through by our leak map. And we see all of our other networks as well. However, if we go back to R9 and let's again say show IP route, you notice that we have a much smaller subset of those routes in our routing table. All of our 10.0.0.0 slash eight networks are missing as well as the network allowed through with the route map. We only have awareness of our own directly connected networks and those networks directly connected to both R6 and R7. So this is another way we can limit our query scope. Just as we looked at with manual summarization and route maps, we can also leak routes through our stub routers if we want to do that. So I'll show you how to do that. If we go to R7, the principle is exactly the same. In other words, we would create an ACL to identify the network. We would associate that with a route map, and then we would advertise it as a leak map. The difference is we indicate the leak map during our stub configuration. So we would be under router EIGRP lab, Go under our address family, autonomous system one, we would say EIGRP stub connected. And if you look at contextual help, we have the leak hyphen map keyword that we can add. And we of course would follow that with the name of the route map that we created to allow that route through. Very simple. One other feature to check out, it's something called fast reroute. 
Fast Reroute, or FRR, allows traffic to be rerouted around a failed link. We already know that EIGRP has the ability to switch over to a feasible successor route and to install that into the routing table in a case where the successor route fails. But that convergence does take time because the feasible successor route is not in the IP routing table. Fast Reroute can allow us to switch over to a backup route in less than 50 milliseconds. This is possible because Fast Reroute will install the successor route into the IP routing table and it will keep the feasible successor route in the forwarding table. Notice that we have a different topology here and that's because I'm using CSR 1000 V routers which support this feature. On router one, if I say show IP, yeah, GRP topology, we'll see both of our routes over to the 34.34.34.0 network. We see a route going over R2 at 12.12.12.2 and R3 at 13.13.13.2. I've changed the metrics here so that we have only one successor route, which of course is going over R2 and the route over R3 will be the feasible successor. If I say show IP route, we'll see that we only have the route going over R2 in our IP routing table, which is what we would expect. If I say show IP route 34.34.34.1, we'll see specific information about this route, again letting us know that this is available over our gig one interface as we see listed here. So let's configure fast reroute here on R1 and see the effect of that. If we go under router EIGRP lab, we want to say address hyphen family, IP version four, autonomous system one. We want to go under topology base and we want to use the keyword fast hyphen reroute. If we look at contextual help, you'll see the different options that we have listed here. The one we want is per hyphen prefix. And if we look at contextual help again, you'll see that we can use a route map to select our prefixes or we can simply say all which is what I'm going to do in our case to do that for all of our prefixes. Notice that we saw a BFD syslog message, bidirectional forwarding detection. This is the mechanism that allows for such fast convergence times. Remember, we explored this feature in a previous section. So now if we say show IP route 34.34.34.1, you'll notice that at the bottom, we see a repair path, which is the route going out of gig two over router three at 13.13.13.2. If we say show IP Ceph 34.34.34.1, this gives us a look at our forwarding table entry specifically for this network. And again, we see our next hop address listed as that of router two, but we also have that repair path going over router three. If we go under interface gig one, and if we say shut, do show IP route 34.34.34.1. You'll see that we've already failed over to the backup route. Notice that before I could even finish running my show command, we got that BFD message letting us know that the BFD session was destroyed. And of course, now we see our routing entry is 13.13.13.2 going over router three. And we don't see a backup path because of course, we don't have redundant paths any longer. We only have a single path to that network. We have immediately failed over to the 13.13.13.2 route almost instantaneously. So that's a look at EIGRP optimization, convergence, and scalability. I hope you found this content useful and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.